Do you realize what this means? No more Apache woman. I'm going to be a big star. Charlotte. <laughs> hiya, hiya. Woo, Would woo, you woo. listen to me? George left you a note. I really think you should read it. Fine. <laughs> Dear Charlotte, don't worry about me. I'll be back in a couple of days. Love, George. Fine. No! Um, no. Not working. Physical comedy means that everything is larger than life. Okay, it's got to be big, big, big. Tony, you got to get your hands up. They're all down here. Okay, get them up above your waist. We've talked about that. Charlotte, you've got to be big. As a Kansas farm boy, I somehow always knew I wanted to be a teacher. I come from a family of five boys. My dad had 13 brothers and sisters. My mom only had one sister, but she had nine children. Of the 60 first cousins, I am the only one to go to college. I hold a BA degree from Southwestern College in Winfield, Kansas in speech communication arts. I have a master's degree in technical theater and design and a second master's degree in journalism. After I received my first master's, I went to New York to work as an actor and costumer. And while I was there, I had the incredible experience of working with people like Carol Burnett and John Travolta. I was not raised in a church home, but have always considered myself to be a pretty spiritual person. Um, and I believe that the, the talents that I, I was given as an actor, as a teacher, or whatever, are, are a gift, a gift from God that I need to cherish and, and protect. Because of that, I've chosen never to smoke, to drink, to do drugs, even though I was a child of, of uh, a teenager in the 60s and, and uh, graduated from the high school, school of the year of Woodstock. Um, however, because of the, that, that determination uh, and, and that commitment, I've had some, some stumbling blocks along the way and, 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 and things that have challenged my faith, but by keeping my faith strong, by keeping my, my belief that this is the way it should be, I was able to, to come through those things. Nine years ago, I suffered a major setback. I um, suffered from degenerative arthritis and four of the vertebra in my neck collapsed, uh, leaving me paralyzed on, on my right side. Um, I underwent surgery, which included uh, taking a bone graft off my hip, rebuilding the bone in my neck, and then fusing those four vertebrae together. The procedure requires going down through the throat um, uh, rather than through from the back of the neck, they go through the front. They pull the vocal cords apart and um, uh, go through the vocal cords to do the surgery. In doing so, my vocal cords tore off uh, uh, both sides, both, piece, both, both, both cords tore loose. And the uh, result was that I had no voice. The doctor explained that it would take some time, but they would heal, and uh, I would once again be able to speak and sing, which had been one of the major joys of my life. A year went by, my voice, speaking voice came back, although it's always been raspy as you hear now, and, um, uh, but my singing voice did not come back. I could barely squeak out a note or two. It was real frustrating because, again, singing was a, was a joy. I went to a number of different doctors. Uh, I went to vocal therapists. I even went to a specialist who worked on working, teaching people to reuse their voice when they had a, a major problem. And this went on for about six or seven years until finally I heard enough times, you will never sing again, come out of their mouths and I gave up. I became very disillusioned uh, disappointed, uh, bitter, angry, the whole gamut. I was, I, I didn't know why this gift that I had been given had been taken away. I love teaching and I've enjoyed a lot of successes as a teacher. In 1999, I was awarded the first ever Georgia Youth Arts Educator of the Year Award. In 2002, I was inducted into the Kansas Theater Hall of Fame for my work there as a teacher and my promotion of the arts in education. 
In 2004, Georgia inducted me into their Theater Hall of Fame. And in 2007, I was inducted into the Educational Theater Association's National Teacher Hall of Fame for theater teachers. I have had the, also the opportunity to work with a number of incredible students. Uh, Kelly Giddish, who currently is on Law and Order. Uh, Matt Gubler, who is uh, a, a regular uh, performer on Criminal Minds. Uh, Julianne Huff of, of Dancing with the Stars and Footloose fame. And Eric Toller, who has been the uh, production supervisor for Fear Factor and just recently won a, an award for his work with Undercover Boss. Those are all really incredible things to have, have uh, been in touch with and, and worked with students on. But I think the most important thing to me is um, the fact that over 20 of my students have been inspired by me to become theater teachers. I consider teaching a, a responsibility, a duty, and even a privilege. Um, I'm, I'm obligated to set an example for my students. I, I truly, truly feel that. And as I serve my students, I believe I serve God because he put me here for a reason. Um, teaching Christian qualities is, is a part of my everyday experience with my students. I, I, I try to teach and, and demonstrate every day things like forgiveness and tolerance and acceptance and, and any of those good Christian qualities that, that make us a, 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 a worthy of living in, in this world. Typically when I do a show with my students, one of the things that we talk about is how all of us are, are serving God by, by our commitment to what we do. And that if we take the talents we're given and we use those, those talents to their fullest, then we're doing what God has asked us to do. I, um, there's a story of a, of, a, of a Roman actor. His name was Genesius. And uh, he was a comic actor who made fun of Christianity during the Roman Empire. One night during a performance, he had an epiphany. And in that epiphany, he realized that, that our God and and, the, and, and Christ were truly the way. And he stopped the show. He denounced all the Roman gods and lifted up uh, God and, and Jesus Christ to the crowd. He was taken before a, um, the, the, the Caesar of the time uh, who told him that he had uh, to recant his statement. And he said, I won't do it. This is, this is what my heart is telling me is right. So he uh, was beheaded. In doing, in, in doing so, he became the patron saint of theater, St. Genesius. To this day, St. Genesius still is a symbol for actors. It's a symbol to remain committed. It's a symbol to remain um, true to your art. Uh, for almost 50 years now, I've worn a St. Genesius medallion, which is, is a, a hard reminder that I have made that commitment. At the end of every show, I give each of my actors a St. Genesius medallion and my crew kids and my assistant directors and anybody else involved. And I remind them that as they go into those performances, as they, as they go out on stage, that they are sharing their talents, their, their God-given gifts, and they have made a commitment to those talents and to those gifts. And so I have students who have carried their St. Genesius medals now for years and years and years, and, the, and who are professional actors who put them in their shoe or uh, wear inside their costume so they press against their skin to remind them that they have made a commitment to their, to their art. About a year ago, Chuck King came to me and he said, I want to do a, a Christmas uh, carol for, Chris, for, for the holiday season. Wes wants to tie it into uh, the, the sermons during, during the month of December, and I want you to help me with it. Uh, and I said, uh, all right, well, let's look at some scripts, which we did. And we decided to do Scrooge, which many of you saw last year. 
Scrooge was a musical, and I knew I couldn't sing. And I said to Chuck, I can't do this, you know, Scrooge has to sing. And he said, I think you're a good enough actor that you can talk, sing it, you can speak it, you can act it, and people will accept it whether you sing it or not. And so with much trepidation, I got convinced to do it, and I, and I took on the part. In November, we were setting tempos for background music, and we were working on the I'll Begin Again number, which is the big finale piece for, for Scrooge at the end of the show. And we were, we'd gone through it a couple of times, and without singing, or without thinking, I just started singing it. And I sailed up to a high F at the end of the, at the, end of the song. A, a note that never in my career as a singer had I been able to sing. And all of us kind of stood there in amazement going, where did that come from? And um, decided that none of us really knew, it was, but it was a God thing. I've never been one to really believe in miracles, but um, uh, after that experience, I know that they do exist. Um, the, the song, I'll Begin Again, took on a whole new meaning for me. Yeah.